The United States has a long history of waging war, from the Native American nations decimated by the U.S. Army to recent bombings of tribal areas in Pakistan and neighborhoods in Libya and Yemen. Since the end of World War II, no other country has killed more people living outside of its borders. Most Americans remain silent while we slaughter children, mothers, and grandparents. In my lifetime, the U.S. has killed well over two million people. We have wounded ten times that many and have caused immeasurable pain to innocent families around the world. We prioritize funding for war over spending on education, health care, a balanced budget, and everything else that can have a positive impact on quality of life. This is my thesis, that one reason the U.S. wages so many wars is because few Ameri Americans speak out against them. Can you imagine what an impact it could have if 1% of the population came to the next anti-war rally? Most people consider those who fought for civil rights to be heroes. What if those who demand peace were also appreciated? What if 1% of voters contacted the representatives in Congress asking for an end to a particular war? That would have an impact. The U.S. honors its military and reinforces warrior behavior with monuments to wartime presidents, memorials to war and to those who have served and died in wars, and with medals, promotions, and ceremonies. Many Americans believe that you earn the peace by winning a war. Most peace memorials in the United States are actually war memorials. And all of these activities and symbols are all part of sustaining a culture of war. There are few indications that American society values those who oppose war. This has resulted in a country that recognizes contributions of the soldier but often holds in derision those who call for peaceful alternatives. What if we honored anti-war activity? What if we re referred to these participants as heroes and patriots? What if we stopped referring to the word anti-war as negative? The word anti-war is no more negative than antibiotic or antihistamine, antifungal or anti-diarrheal. War is a disease. What are the potential consequences of peacefully opposing war in this country? Arrest, tear gas, beatings by the police, imprisonment or worse, home invasions, attorney fees, fines, loss of income, maybe loss of friends, maybe family members who no longer speak to you, you might lose your job or a promotional opportunity. I suspect that many of you in this room have suffered, suffered physically, financially, and or emotionally for your anti-war convictions. It is often heroic to speak out against war. Since the end of World War II, the U.S. has invaded more than 20 countries. If you add Pakistan to this list, it's actually 24 that the U.S. government would admit to having bombed. U.S. presidents reinforced the culture of war. They refer to everyone in the military as heroes and do what they can to suppress dissent. War is part of our culture and change requires that people be taught or that peace be taught and that peace leadership be valued, documented, recognized, and honored. I'm going to tell you about our project. It's time to dedicate a national monument to peace and to the peacemakers, and to take steps towards creating a culture of peace in the United States. The foundation exists to demonstrate that advocating for peaceful solutions to international problems is an honorable and socially acceptable activity. That's the small cultural change we're trying to make. The goals are to recognize U.S. peace leadership as a reminder that America values peace, to build the U.S. Peace Memorial as a national monument in Washington, D.C., and to publish the U.S. Peace Registry, which identifies role models for peace and anti-war activity. There are currently no national records of U.S. peace leadership. 
or children are not taught about peace, the peace movement and its leaders. In terms of recognizing peace leadership, we award an annual peace prize. Cindy Sheehan won the 2009 prize in recognition of her extraordinary and innovative anti-war activism. Congressman Dennis Kucinich, in recognition of his national leadership to prevent and end wars. This project will provide information that can be used to educate American youth and others about our nation's rich history of patriotic citizens and leaders who have advocated for peace and against war. It will recognize famous people as well as people like you. One way we recognize peace leadership is by selecting quotations from famous Americans that will be engraved on the memorial's walls. We hope that everyone will recognize the, each of the names but be shocked by the strong anti-war sentiment. That will be the teaching moment that can help to change our culture. Visitors will learn that American leaders from all walks of life have opposed one or more wars. In terms of quotations that will be on the monument, Here's one from Helen Keller, not known for her anti-war work. Strike against war, for without you, no battles can be fought. Albert Einstein, it is my conviction that killing under the cloak of war is nothing but an act of murder. This is what we mean by that the person will know the name but be surprised by the strong anti-war content. You're familiar with President Eisenhower's warning about the military-industrial complex and his concerns about the futility stupidity and brutality of war. We have quotations going back to George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Here's one from Benjamin Franklin. So our national monument will serve as an educational venue. Its very existence will make it clear that it's accept acceptable to oppose U.S. wars, that those who speak out for peace are not traitors, un-American, unpatriotic, or anti-military. And finally, I've told you about the Peace Award, I've told you about the monument. Our final goal is that we're publishing the U.S. Peace Registry. Our foundation is developing a national database that documents the broad range of modern peace and activism and anti-war behavior. It recognizes individual and organizational role models for U.S. peace leadership. U.S. Peace Registry currently exists online and will be published as a book next year. It is hypothesized that documenting, recognizing, and honoring role models for activism will adjust our culture, inspiring more Americans to speak out for peace. So our work will help current and future generations understand how individuals and organizations have opposed war and promoted peace. We hope that it will stimulate new discussion, increase comfort levels, and lead to greater citizen involvement. This Kennedy quote could have been the impetus for our project. War will exist until that distant day when the conscientious objector enjoys the same reputation and prestige that the warrior does today. Here, here.